Well, thank you, Juliana, for agreeing to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. So what I'm interested in knowing is what was your challenge before we started working together? So we worked together for 12 weeks. What was your challenge before we started working together? Oh, I, I had a few that I remember that uh, we spoke together, but I think why I contact you, uh, it's because of my lack of confidence on my speaking skills and on my writing skills. So the challenge to overcome, I think it was to be able to speak um, in public with more confidence, write emails without thinking out, this might be wrong or there's some grammar uh, mistake here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay, and that's so also- were- yeah. Sorry, go. Yeah, no, I was going to uh, just say that also to um, get a bit more familiarized uh, with uh, architectural uh, terms and the words that I kind of uh, forgot a bit and I wasn't uh, like a good reader probably while I was um, learning English. So that's something that I had to, um, uh, to challenge while I was working with you. Yeah, I guess it's something, it's, it's definitely something that comes up a lot is that you can learn English, but then it's a totally different way of speaking, isn't it, when you're speaking about architectural terms or you're speaking about projects. So it's something that we have to sort of work on a little bit. So what did we do together in our sessions, just so some people know kind of how I work with people? Uh, so firstly, I remember that you asked me what was my um, what I would like to to improve during the class, and after I told you what uh, what uh, were all my my challenges, and you made like some uh, a specific classes with me. So uh, firstly, we spoke about my projects and what I have worked before, and I had to explain that in English to you. Uh, I remember it was a bit complicated because some of them were uh, in Brazil, so I couldn't translate. The ones that I worked in Australia in English was, were easy for me. And um, we also discuss, discussed uh, some articles that I um, I liked and uh, YouTube videos that you recommended to me so we could uh, speak about what this speech uh, speaker was talking about and uh, were like obviously related to architecture. Yeah. yeah. So. And what was the most helpful for you? What did you think helped you um, at work in general? Oh, the first thing that... Um, um, was m- more helpful was was the the confidence that boosted like uh, amazingly like uh, completely I changed it after the class because uh, I think I, I I really needed uh, classes to um, to show that I could speak that I didn't have a, pro- a problem like or at least a big problem with grammar and that I was able to, uh, to talk about architecture in another language as well. Uh, I think that's, um, but the confidence was the most useful thing for me because um, I think uh, that's what I was really, really looking uh, forward to improve. And definitely I achieved that. One thing that I also, um, I think it's rescue the word was my <laughs> my passion for design because I was aiming to to get back to the design field, but the way that we spoke during the classes made me go to see to listen to podcasts that I wasn't used to, and because you recommended me, I started to listen to lots of podcasts and <laughs> follow lots of architects Instagram and. Uh, drafting and uh, sketching and uh, uh, software that I sh- that I should be able to, to use because I thought I was a bit uh, out to date. So uh, yeah, all of these things were, were helpful for me, I think. That's great. That's the first time you've said that to me. So it's good that <laughs> it's inspired your passion for design. And I think actually some people tell me that, that 
just talking about design sometimes helps to inspire that passion, which is good. Um, my next question is, if, if you were somebody else who was in your position, so say somebody's coming from Brazil or from overseas and they're coming to live in Australia, what sort of things would you say to them to give them advice about how, could, how they could improve their English? Oh, I think the first thing is that they need to read the articles in English, something that I didn't know for some reason. <laughs> I was reading uh, about uh, IELTS articles, so scientific articles, a uh, politics article that I'm also interested in, but I never, for some reason, I forgot about architecture and I forgot to read about architecture. And this is really, really import important. Uh, to make yeah to to grow your vocabulary, you can't miss that if you are an architect. Um, and the podcast is also yeah it's really interesting. I'm new to this world and I really liked. So yeah, uh, make up a, a book like a notebook with all your new words is important. Um, and uh, keep um, yeah keep listening to what's going on on the field because it changes a lot. Lots of new terms uh, comes um, up. Uh, sometimes they are talking about the same thing that we, uh, we know, but in different words. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you need to know what they are talking about. And I, I felt that like they don't, they may say like biophilic design, but biophilic it's pretty much like use all you know, like we learned that at uni like 10 years ago, but now they call it biophilic design as a new thing. And yeah. I don't know when I first listened to that in English, and then I went to see, that, okay, we studied that. Uh, so things that you need to keep, um, yeah, reading and to see what's going on in our, mm. in our field um, yes. with terms, yeah, think about it. Yeah, I think it's important that you mention that too, because reading and keeping in contact with what's happening in the field it's it's almost for me killing two birds with one stone so it's keeping you passionate and interested about what you do but you're also learning vocabulary so that you build that confidence around what you're talking about so given that you've done all of this and you know when we first were working together you were working in project management do you want to explain what you're doing now and what you've worked towards yes so another reason why I contact you is because I was working with project management, but uh, in my mind, I was in a transition field. I would like to go back to the design uh, field. Um, but I worked in Sydney with project management and I, I pretty much managed uh, the development from the beginning or from the design phase to the construction uh, phase for uh, residential buildings and um, some hospitality buildings as well and and then a bit with concept design for parks around Sydney so what I did I contract I um, engaged the consultants um, I reviewed the program so our clients had an expectation about the program so I had to uh, break up the program see what was going um how it would be the order to things to happen i worked a bit with a budget but just to ensure that the project was in line with the budget and and dealt with the consultants they tried to explain what's going on what the client wanted what the client liked and or didn't like yeah that mm -hmm. was my life yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now I'm doing a bit differently because I am back to the design team in an architectural firm and we are working with uh, a hospital, so healthcare. And I'm pretty much working as a project coordinator and I, I work in the design team. So uh, with the refurbishment, refurbishment of um, two hospitals at the moment. And I work with the layouts, uh, how, uh, making existing plans, more documentation, and uh, dealing also with the consultants uh, that make part of the team, like the engineers, see what's going on with the existing building, or what we can change, what is yeah the structural part. Yeah, so that's okay. what I'm doing now. 
Great. So it sounds like it's much closer to sort of what you wanted to do in the beginning when you first came to yeah. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. And I'm, I'm very happy to know that I inspired you and you felt more <laughs> inspired about architecture. That's always a win for me. So thank you for mentioning that. Okay. Was, is there anything else that you wanted to say before we, we click uh, stop? Uh, no, I, I recommend you to, uh, to many friends that I, that I know that are learning English. That's what I like to say. That's it. Uh, I really enjoyed working with you. And I think the way that you led the, the classes were, uh, when, um, I could uh, memorize that because it was in a informal way, but also at the same time was in a way that I could, uh, uh, it was practical, it was uh, productive. And I think that's what I, I remember from the classes that, yeah, it helped me a lot. So I, I only have to thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Julia. <laughs> yeah, was yeah different and um, challenging for everybody, and obviously for me as well. And but even there, I'm I managed to get um, to do what I wanted. Went to many interviews. <laughs> uh, you you know, of course. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. We did some interview practice. Yes, of course. Exactly. But... We a lot of interview practice. I also practiced a lot alone, but as well, <laughs> uh, to the mirror, to, to the friends. Yeah, so that right. made the difference, that's for sure. Mm. Well, thank you for saying that. And yeah, thank you. And um, um, good luck for the rest of uh, your job and your career. I hope it goes well. And I'm glad to know that you're feeling much more confident. So thank you, Juliana. Thank you. <laughs> okay.